David Gawley and I'd like to take a quick look at Curtain Walls in Revan Architecture 2010. A curtain wall is simply a system family um, that is defined under the wall pull down. So if I actually select the wall to add in, and here you'll see hidden curtain walls. So we've got a couple system families already built into the standard templates. So say if I pick curtain wall, I'm just simply in my 3D view, I can pick point to point. Just looks like a bit of glass. There's another style called exterior glazing out of the metric templates. Again, another one called storefront. A common mistake that a lot of users make about curtain walls is that they add in a normal wall. So you go to wall, um, you change the element type, say, to a standard cavity. Let's add that in. Um, you want to add in one of the existing walls. Let's change the height of this. So we can get a curtain wall, we can right click, like this tool, very easy, create similar. So you hook in, and you try to add your glazing in against the existing wall, and you get an error message. It's basically embedded within it. So it's not automatically cutting out the geometry. So let's look at how we would actually change that. So I'm going to start with one of the system um, families that I want to use. So I'm going to delete these other two, and I'm going to select this one. And very easy, we go to element properties to change the element properties. Quick tip, when you're editing the type, always make a duplicate of it, so you're making a copy of the actual system family style. And I'm gonna call this custom curtain wall. In my options, we've got um, various options such as the function, whether it's exterior or interior, but the important one for me at the minute is I want to automatically embed it in the wall so the geometry's cut it. I can define my spacing in here, so I can say, look, it's no defined spacing, it can be a fixed distance, fixed number, maximum spacing or minimum spacing. I'm going to leave it as maximum, I'm going to say I want that 1.5 meters or 1500 mil with a vertical of 2.2 meters. And we've got our million types in here, you can see the system family in the background has no millions, so you can just see at the edge there. So I'm going to say, well look, for the interior types, let's use the 30 mil square. For the exterior, we'll use the 150 by 150. So I'm going to do the exact same for the horizontal. 30 mil square, 150 by 150, and 150 by 150. Okay, when well I'm happy with that, I hit OK, and OK. And it should have created a new, it's changed the, obviously uh, on the screen, but we'll have a new system family in here called Custom Curtain Wall. Don't forget that's actually assigned to the actual uh, Revit file itself at the minute. Um, but more importantly, if I select it and go create similar, and I look at this wall back here, let's pan over to it, hook in to the actual wall, that's important, make sure you are connecting to the wall. Click from point to point, that will actually take the elements away. We've got nice few features in here, if I hover over the elements, if you can't really pick the elements up, use the tab key to cycle through. As shown here, I'm tabbing through, but that's what I want with well, the millions, and you can see my toggle million join. If I click it, it'll connect to the adjacent million. So that's one of the ways they actually create cu curtain walls. Um, another method you can actually do, um, I like this method, I'm just going to delete these elements out here. I'm going to go back into my ground floor. Again, I'm going to add on a wall. I'm going to change the element type. Let's have a look at a standard cavity. Just create a quick wall along here. Um, what I'd like to do in here is I'm going to go to my view tab, or my view in the ribbon. I'm going to go to my elevation and create an elevation in here. Okay, nice thing about the elevation is if you select it, you can change the scope box off it so you can drag where you're actually looking at. So if I want to go to that elevation, I can either navigate to my project browser or simply double click and it'll take me directly there. Just pop that down to 1 to 50, and I'm actually going to add a wee bit of shading with edges in here. So if I look at this, I can actually split the wall out. So under Manage, um, or sorry, under um, Modify, we can look at splitting the elements of this wall out. I'm just going to split it here and here. So if I select this section of wall, I can say, well, let's pop this out, and um, let's change this to our curtain wall. So we've got a bit of glass in here. So sometimes you might want to use the standard system style. You might want to break out and draw your own individual grid lines. But it's easily done on the home tab. We've got a bit of glass. And what I'm simply going to say, 
let's look at the current grid. So I can click on the area that I want to split. I can then define that and say, well, look, that has to be 750 mil down. Now, I could look at this panel here and say, tab, tab through it and then select it. So what I did there is I hovered over it, hit the tab key. As soon as I know that panel's um, highlighted, I click, picks it up. Rather than glass, I could say, well, look, that could be hidden by a slab. Um, we could change that to solid. So that's a solid area in there that might be between floors. Now I can start to split out. So I can go back to home. I can look at my curtain grid and actually split the elements out. I might want a double door in here, set 1900. And again, I can split the individual areas out. But we've got various options in here. I'm doing all segments. I can say, look, give me one individual segment or all except pick. So I could say, look, split out all these areas apart from the pick one. And again, we can undo that. Um, but let's go again, we'll go back in there. Curtain grid. I'm just gonna say one segment. Give me a one segment there, and maybe a one segment here. So we can define the areas that we actually want to pick out. Um, but the elements in here, say I want the outer door in. Again, I can use tab cycle through, and I can actually change my door from the library. So I've got a double glass door um, loaded. Um, as a curtain panel. Now, if you want to load one of these in, this will normally cause confusion with uh, users. Simply go to component. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna load a family. So if I'm looking for my um, curtain wall panels, go to curtain wall panels, it's not doors you're looking for. And in there, you'll see a variety of double glass doors. Again, you can create your own family or RFA file. So I get the double glass door that I want and I open it. Now, you don't just simply hover over. What you've got to do is actually pick up on the existing door that you want to change. Again, I use my tab key. And if I cycle, if I scroll down, I'll see there's a variety of different double glass doors that I can use. So if I pick a double glass door that I want to change to, it'll change the actual style in there. Now, if I want to put my millions on, again, what I can do is I can go to million. Um, I've got my options in here. I can apply it to the whole grid line. So I can say, look, apply my millions in here to the whole grid line. You can see that's being applied. You can also apply this in a 3D view. So let's pop this out to 3D so we can actually see our curtain wall. There's our custom curtain wall there. So again, if I want to apply my million, I can go in here and say, look, um, let's apply it to the grid line segment and bang it in. Again, grid line segment and bang it in. Now, any of the elements that we want to actually change, so say this element here, you can simply select it and delete it and it will adjust the height of the door. Again, for the components, you can see my solid fill here. I can tab over and I can change my join conditions. You know, it depends what way it's actually going to be um, manufactured or created on site, etc. You know, this, this is the way the join could work in here. So that's very quickly curtain walls in a quick nutshell. Um, I'm David Gawley. Thanks very much.